G'day guys, Chewie here and welcome back to some more coverage of Warlords of Draenor where today we're going to be looking at some more arena action and using the Boom King and following on with the continuation of, I guess, the growth of our skills and some more matchups and hopefully we can learn a few things of what I've done wrong this week and hopefully do better for the next. So first up we're doing a DK Rogue combo, so um, I mean at a, a team like this obviously the, the Rogue's going to be stealth so you could drop the DK, I think that's what I wanted to do, um, just double checking with him. Because with the DK, they, you know, they've got a lot of abilities that allow them to really self-heal so significantly. And I'm actually working on a DK, trying to get him up to 100, and God, that's annoying, and going back and doing all that stuff again. But I'm trying to get him up there, because it's a really viable actual class to play in Arena, but side to that. So we've obviously with the Rogue in this video, he's doing for the stealth, keeping the DK hidden. And I guess I just wanted to hide, just sort of wait for them to bait out before I popped off my abilities. A little bit of a fault there. I probably shouldn't have just um, popped into that. Should have went into the straight into my burst ability, which is going into the um, upgraded Boom King form. So there you can see I'm just focusing as much star surges as I can as possible, and really just trying to spread my dots across them both. Um, now that I'm sort of looking at this, uh, I probably should have cycloned as an opener on the Rogue as I switched into that um, when I was spreading the dots. So that was probably not the best move that I played there. And it's something I definitely need to be working on here, even though I've got a couple of macro, uh, sorry, a key bindings that to assist me, is I really got to be on top of actually applying those Cyclones in a little bit more crucial time, because it, it really does assist so much. But, oh, damn, that's what I'm talking about. You see, we got that DK down pretty much to critical, and obviously popped off one of his major cooldowns to heal, and he just smashed up like a, a ridiculous amount of life. But we nailed the DK down, we've managed to get him, and now it's pretty much reaped the benefits. I mean, at any point, especially if you're with a class like a Druid that can off-spec off heal, which, which is what I started doing to my DK just then, just started smashing him with some of my healing touches. At this point in the match, it's pretty much one and over, but I mean, I think the valuable thing I took out of that was I probably should have did a little bit more, um, I guess, CC and using my ability a little bit more fluently, because um, it probably could have assisted with the speed of that battle. But all in all, not too bad for the first round with the DK Druid combo, and man, it is fun teaming up with the DK rather than versing the mole matches, because I must say, it's definitely a popular class to come up against in the arena. So, oh, this pesky rogue, so you can see I'm just trying to find him because he's running around everywhere, as you would with a combat rogue. But uh, there he is, there he is. Go on, get the finisher, get the finisher. Yeah, that's all right, my DK got him with a brilliant strangulate, throwing in some star surges, and there you have it. All right, guys, so the next match is another DK and a Holy Priest. Well, this isn't too bad, but, oh, man, I'm hating DKs. <laughs> well, not hating, but I'm hating to burst them all the time. But, it, yeah, Holy Priest. Uh, and I guess um, my partner there was saying we really need to go for that Holy Priest because it's an easy kill. Uh, I don't know if it'll be an easy kill, but it should be a fun match to try commentate to see how it went anyway. So I guess uh, really what I was trying to do here for the setup is I really need to open with a really good cyclone on that DK because he is a Frost DK, so he's going to be channeling one of us for his bursts. Um, I think here I was just double checking that my skills were secure, and I actually just realized, I think I know why I did that now, I was trying to see, <clears throat> while I'm shapeshifted in this form, I didn't have that ability um, set up as a keybind, so I could quickly action it from my mouse, but <clears throat> we did a really, really good opener there on the DK. I, I, did, did he just trinket proc? No, he didn't. No, he just did something to break out that CC. And I guess what I was trying to do in this point in the match is I was trying to get into a better position where I can put some more pressure on that Holy Priest. Um, but he's obviously doing a lot better. Oh, that was a really nice crit from my Star Surge that I used there before. Uh, the reason why I used Star Fall is I think I was just thinking, well, it's just constant damage to spread across both of them. And, and I knew this, you know, versing a priest like this, there'll be a lot of running around. And man, he is good. He's, he's actually quite a good opponent to come up against because you can see how he's really using those poles to maximum benefit. We, ooh, we're getting the priest quite low here. It looks like it might be viable for a win. Um, I, I've got some pretty good dots on him. I really should be, again, taking more advantage of trying to soak Cyclone that DK a little bit more. You've seen I got one off successfully there. We've got him at critical. This could be it. This could be it. This could... Come on, interrupt. Oh, man, that's just a pain in the ass. That was just a pain in the ass from the priest. But I think, I think we've got him pretty low now, so it, we've just really got to get in there. And we missed it again. Um, just a quick talent talk, guys. I normally have to disorientate with the raw, but I, I switched that off because I found before this video I was, I was versing a few heal combo targets, and then I just really couldn't pass up how valuable that stun would be, so I sort of just swapped it to bash, just to let you guys know. And, and oh man, come on, see, see what I mean? Like, if, if you're really good with your priest, uh, 
or, or any heels class, and you're really good at using those targets to hide and surround and keep the heels up. I mean, it is a very viable class to do. It's something I want to be working on a lot better personally, but um, he's just a pain in the ass. But we did ooh, we did a quick action more, try getting a better position. And we do have our uh, solar beam up, so I mean, at this point, I really just... That priest is out killing me on the poles completely. I really should just get into a good position and cyclone that, that he, the opponent DK there just to keep the pressure off him because otherwise, slowly but surely, my DK is going to be chipped away at. But n nothing matters, so I think we we'll swap back to the priest now. Um, and you can see he's just popped down one of his major cooldowns to do some serious damage to me. Taking a fair bit of damage from the DK, not too concerned because we're really just swapping that pressure over onto that priest. Um, and if we can get a good stun here, oh come on, get the stun. I think my stun isn't on cooldown, use it, use it. I didn't use it. We got him anyway, so that's the that's the final form there of the priest. And and really it just comes down to us versus DK at this point now. So <coughs> it was a long fight this one guys. Um, valuable points to think about was use my stun a little bit better, definitely be applying a lot more cyclones on the on the off target there. I mean, I probably should even, suggesting it, get a good macro for off target cycling, so that way I can still channel down the healer whilst being able to apply CC. But all in all, not too bad. A um, little bit rocky, definitely not very smooth. Didn't really get my damage up too high, but we got there. We, we, we managed to survive through it, and now the priest, and there you have it, for the win. And for our last matchup, because the last one was quite long rather than four short ones, I think three mediocre matches will be right. Oh, we've got the Shaman Rogue combo. So obviously here is a Restoration Shaman. So I'm guessing, I mean, usually with all Shamans, we just rush a Shaman. I mean, there's some other tactics you can do. I know we usually do the same thing all the time, but you could actually go for a whole CC application on the Shaman and burst down the Rogue. But with Shadow Step and a few of our these mitigation abilities, I think we've got more viable viable strength in taking down the uh, Shaman because... I don't know, I just I just feel like, it, unless it's the shamans that I'm coming up against, they're quite easy to burst down. Um, it just seems you'd, you'd be able to keep enough pressure on them, strong enough, to really just chisel them down to nothing. So obviously here we've got the, the rogue is trying to hide the shaman. And here comes the rogue, uh, opening up with the cyclone. I'm pressing again, I'm, yeah, that's, that, that is just bad there, that is just bad. Look how long I was not in my form, I'm not applying dots. Yeah, that, that was not the best start, and I just I just got my application. So you can see I'm just focusing a crap ton of damage on the rogue, which is not good because I did tell did tell my DK I was going to be focusing that 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 damage onto the shaman. That was a really good morph to get into a better position, but I really need to get that um, that solar beam on a quick action skill because you can see, um, you know. I really need to keep that pressure up on the, on that shaman because he's going to be very good at, at jumping around those poles. A lot better than what we can do anyway. There comes the kick from the rogue. Need to get in a better position on the shaman. Those healing surgeons is a pain in the butt. And a couple of good crits there. So oh, we got him down critical. The shaman's almost down. Come on, come on, come on. Oh man, the bash is on CC. Oh. Oh no, no. He's gonna he's gonna be able to survive that. He, he's yeah. He's going to be able to get out of that. There we go. Once he's gone into that, that form there, he's going to be able to really boost up significantly how much he healed himself. So that, that is most unfortunate. Um, I'm actually... This is kind of risky play because I am leaving my Frost DK in... Uh, oh, is he Frost? I can't remember now. Um, I'm leaving my DK buddy in quite a critical situation because you can see his life up there in the left-hand corner is dropping quite significantly. I'm not really applying a lot of CCs in these matches that are played this day. Uh, which is not good, and I can really, really see um, where I'm lacking in that form of support. So the rogue has switched off to come to me, which is a little bit unusual. This would be a good opener for a stun. Beautiful, beautiful bash there. And you can see how that bash, uh, opposed from disorientate, really assists so much with nailing those healers down, uh, especially stunning them in, a, in an arena like this, where they're just going to be basically running around those poles. Um, I probably could be, yeah, just thinking, of, come on, get a good crit off. Damn it, he's just an absolute pain in the butt, aren't they? I wish I was that good running around, but this is it. Boom, there we go. <laughs> Once you get to that point, guys, it's it's pretty much over. I think we've we've got this in the bag. I think I uh, I didn't even switch to start healing my buddy. I just went went straight into the damage on the rogue, but not a bad matchup. Um, a lot to learn from there, and here comes the healing part, so that's good. I uh, definitely need to improve on the CCs and the way I activate those um, on my, my focus target opposed to trying to knock off my sub by, or I guess my secondary target. 
But all in all, not too bad. I hope you enjoyed this week. And, uh, yeah, we kicked it again. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.